All right, in this final floating video, we're going to look at a simple example. We're going to replicate that same layout we did with CSS positioning, only this time we'll use floats. So I'm going to jump over here to my code, and I have the exact same HTML we worked on before. So I'm not going to retype all of this. You might want to pause the video and catch up with me right here, but this is all the HTML code you need, which is the exact same as the CSS positioning code. The only difference is going to be the HTML, or rather the CSS. So let's jump over to the CSS and we'll do this part from scratch. So I'm going to create my wrapper tag again. And this is going to have a width of 800 pixels. And this is going to have a height of, let's see, I think we said 600 pixels and a background color of black. If you have all the code from the CSS positioning one, you can go ahead and just copy and paste that as well as we're just going to make a few changes. But I'm going to do this rather quickly. So I'm going to just uh, paste this out several times and then change all the values. So I'll do it for that's for my header, my nav, my content, sidebar, and footer. Then I'll come and change each of these. So it's going to be the header. It's going to have the same width. It's going to have a height of 100. We'll make it red. The nav has the same width, height of 50, and we'll make it blue. The content is going to have a width of, we did 600 pixels before, and it had a height of 400 and we'll say green and the sidebar has a height of 200 same height of or rather a width of 200 height of 400 like this one orange and our footer had a width of 800 and a height of 50 and a background color of let's see which color have we not used it's purple and let's save and refresh and make sure we're um, good to go here so let's open up that HTML page in our web browser and make sure this is all lined up. So we have our header, our nav, we have the content, we have the sidebar, and we have the footer. So this is just the default layout, which is the same thing we did before. Now we have the same issue. We need to get this sidebar and we need to get the sidebar up in this area. So now this time we're going to be using CSS floats. So the first thing is to take this sidebar and float it right. So we'll come to our sidebar. And we'll say float right and save come up in here and refresh and now it's floated to the right but the problem is it's at the right edge but it's still not fitting up into this slot and the reason is because this tag right here which is our content div it's a block level tag meaning it's occupying this entire horizontal area so this tag can't go up in here so what we need to do is we need to take this tag and float it left and then this will slide up in there because they'll both be removed from the document flow. So our content area, we're going to say float left and save and refresh. And now that tag's floated left, that tag is floated right, and they're both removed from the document flow. So you ask yourself, well, where did the footer tag go? The footer used to be down here. Because both of these are floated, the footer tag slid up and it's actually underneath them. It's actually right inside of here. We could see it if we just added a little bit of padding to this tag right here. Let's just add 10 packs pixels and refresh. You can see the footer is in fact up underneath both of those because these two were removed from the document flow. So let's undo that. So now the problem is I need to restore document flow on the footer tag. So this is where we can apply that clearing. So down here on the footer, I can say clear and because I have both a left and a right floated element, I need to say both. And again, restating what we've gone over, because I clear, that means that that footer has to appear after these two elements visually, whatever they are. So now when I, reflect, when I refresh, that footer tag does in fact jump back down here. So the footer is now in its proper position. And then to finish this off, we can do the same thing we did before. If we come up to our wrapper, can say margin zero space auto that will center it and we're off to the races this will remain in the center so you can see that with floating I simply had to add a float here and a float here so it's as far as the code it's about six as CSS positioning was about the same amount amount of code we just had to simply add a CSS positioning in the previous rule I prefer using floating um, there's a few trade-offs between floating and CSS positioning that I'll quickly cover. By using floats, the content of both of these areas 
will continue to stretch if the content grows. Let me illustrate this. Now, if I take off the height on the sidebar and I take off the height on the content, they're just gonna collapse because they don't have any content. But the benefit of using floats is if I add a whole bunch of content inside of here, here's a bunch of stuff and I'll just do a break tag. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this a whole bunch of times inside of this paragraph tag. So here's my paragraphs and I'll just copy and paste away here a whole bunch of times to illustrate this. Then I'll come and refresh. You can see that as long as that code or as long as the content keeps growing. So if I add more and more and more and save and refresh, the div just keeps on stretching down and down and the footer will always be below the content. And this is how a lot of blog sites are laid out because you really don't know how much content will be on the home page. They could have one post, they could have six posts. So no matter how long the content is, the footer will always remain on the bottom and it'll just keep stretching out forever and ever and ever and ever, which is really nice because then your footer is always at the bottom of your website. With the CSS positioning method, this doesn't quite work out as nice and I'll illustrate that next. <clears throat> so let's, uh, I'm gonna leave all this content here except I'm gonna come back to my styles. I'm gonna delete these floats and I'll put back in the height here. So I'll say height is 400 pixels. And right here, I'll say height is 400 pixels. And let's delete this clear. So now I'm gonna basically do it the same way we did before where I'll use positioning. So I've gotta set up my wrapper. I'll say position is relative. And then I'll come down here to the sidebar and I'll say, position absolute, and we'll say right zero, top 150. Save and refresh. So that sticks this uh, <clears throat> element over here. I'm getting actually these black spaces up here um, because this paragraph actually has a default margin. So I'm actually just gonna delete those paragraph tags to hurry and get rid of that. So you can see the issue here that if you have more content, it just overlaps. So to get to mitigate this issue, I would have to come inside of here and delete the height. So if you have an explicit height set in your CSS, like we do on our content section, it'll always be that height. And so if I delete the height and save and refresh, then you can see that the tag um, or the div rather does in fact stretch according to the content, which is working fairly nice in this instance. Now, the reason why it's working here is because this tag is not positioned, the, the content area. To illustrate this, what I have to do is I have to take all this content and move it over and stick it inside of the sidebar. So I just cut and pasted it inside of the sidebar. We'll come up in here and refresh. And let's go back here and we'll take off the height on our sidebar div. So we'll do the same thing. We'll just replace this so it doesn't look funny and come back and refresh. Now you can see that the sidebar has all sort of content and it keeps stretching as long as I keep adding more and more break tags in there, that content would just keep stretching along. So we can add a whole nother set and refresh and it just keeps growing. But the problem is the footer. Because this element is floated, the footer is still stuck right there. And so it doesn't, we want the footer to appear after here, down always on the bottom of the site. But if you use CSS positioning, you can't get the footer to go all the way down there. In order to get the footer down there, you would have to reposition the footer all the way to the bottom. So that's a quick overview of floats and maybe one, uh, one or two of the benefits of using floats instead of using CSS positioning. Now, the last thing I wanna illustrate here is I'm gonna cut out all of this content here from this sidebar div. So we'll cut that out I'm gonna paste it back up into the content div and refresh. And you'll notice that because I have a height set on my content div, content has height of 400. So no matter what, this div is gonna be 400 pixels tall. Even though there's a whole bunch more content, it just kind of overflows and it's just kind of messy and it breaks your layout. So if you have an explicit height set on a div, but the content is too large, there's a few options. The default behavior is just that it overflows and kind of runs on top of all the elements. But you can set a few of the properties on that div to determine how that content will flow in the box. So what you can do is the property here is called overflow. 
and I can set this to hidden. If I save and refresh, any of the content that's outside of this 400 pixels height just gets cut off. So it's still there, it's just invisible really now. It just cuts it off there and I can't see it. Or you can set this to auto. And what auto does is if the content of the content div is taller than 400 pixels, which we know it is, it'll automatically add a side, uh, a scroll bar here to the side. And that allows the user to scroll up and down between your content, but only in this particular div. So that's one way that you can have a whole bunch of content in a simple area with a fixed height. Just set that overflow to auto and then you'll get those scroll bars. So again, the default is just, it keeps on going forever or you can make it hidden or you can say overflow auto to get these scroll bars on the left and right.